Olá pessoal, hoje eu tenho um convidado especial aqui no canal, o Dirk Hartig da PrimeXBT. Ele é um trader que tem mais de 20 anos de experiência e vai compartilhar com a gente aqui algumas estratégias e falar também sobre o mercado. O conteúdo vai ser em inglês, mas eu vou deixar aqui as legendas do vídeo, tá? Você basta você descer aqui no YouTube, botar as legendas para você acompanhar aqui a conversa. Então, bora lá para o vídeo de hoje. Hello, Dirk. Thank you so much for coming to the channel today. It's a pleasure to have you here. Let's talk about the market and crypto in general. Hey, guys. How are you? Thanks for having me today. Pleasure to be here with you. Cool. Uh, Dirk, just before we start, uh, I would like to maybe you to introduce yourself, talk about your trading experience. I've seen that you've been trading for more than 20 years, also for institutional yeah. investors, maybe big whales. Maybe you can talk about your trading experience in general and about yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, uh, my name is Dirk Hartig. I'm what probably a lot of people out there would uh, call a professional trader. So I've been doing this for 20 years. I mainly focus on trading currency options and since 2017 uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, I use different time frames, different uh, trading strategies. Uh, so from everything from day trading to really long, long uh long long term trades uh the, the typical hotling maybe you would call it when talking about cryptocurrencies uh, i'm doing everything there and since may this year uh, i am also uh, the head of trading education here at prime expertise so we are building up an education platform here you know for to use modern technologies use youtube and so on and so forth to provide Uh, something for trading beginners where they can come to kind of avoid all the traps and mistakes you tend to make as a trading beginner. So basically, people do not have to uh, stumble on all those traps and lose their money like I had. I still had it to learn it the hard way. Uh, but back then, when I started, there was no YouTube yet. <laughs> No, very cool. Uh, guys, for those who don't know, PrimeSBT has a channel here. I'm going to show you my screen with you guys. You can check out PrimeSBT Trading Academy. Just go down here to the link in the description. I'm going to leave all the links to everything we'll be talking about in the in this video today. Just go down here and make sure you follow PrimeSBT Academy, guys. So there's very cool content. You see, I'm watching all the videos. Um, I'm learning a lot from uh, here with uh, Dirk. So for sure, you guys are going to learn a lot as well. And you can add subtitles. You know, for those who are speak uh, Portuguese, you can add subtitles as well. So uh, Dirk has a lot of experience. For sure, you're going to learn a lot. Um, so this this PrimeXBT uh, channel is basically the, the PrimeXBT um, um, project to educate people, to show them show them how to, you know, uh, surf the waves of the, of the market. So this is the idea. Yeah. And I really like the, the what you guys are doing here. And hopefully this channel is going to grow a lot, right, Dirk? Yeah, I, I hope so too. Um, so uh, I'm, I was surprised like how much interest there is after such a short time already. And uh, I, you know, I always have an open air to really address those, those questions, especially trading beginners have, uh, because trading can be really, really rewarding, you know, when you have like a series of good trades, but it also can be very, very frustrating. So, you know, when you have had a bad day or maybe two or three bad days in a row where nothing works out, uh, you tend to go home frustrated and it's always good you know to to have a place where you can go somewhere where you can share your experience where you see hey I'm not the only one this is like part of a game this is totally normal uh, I should not doubt myself yeah pretty, that's so cool actually this is something I like to talk about more about uh, about that because you have a lot of experience so can you maybe share with us some some tips for traders especially beginners yeah. maybe what are the common pitfalls people fall into mm -hmm. or maybe mistakes they make maybe it'll be very inter interesting to talk about that yeah sure I, i mean of course when we talk about trading we have to talk about mistakes and i think the most common or let's say the most two common mistakes trading beginners uh, make is first of all being over emotionally so uh, attaching yourself emotionally to your position and everybody who has been trading knows that already yeah when uh, when a position goes against you um, as a beginner you tend to not cut, cut your losses you tend to hope I, it's going into my direction again maybe i'm going to add to the position you know to bring my average price up or down depending on what direction i'm trading at the moment um so bringing the average price uh, into my favor and hoping and hoping and hoping and weirdly enough sometimes that works out 
But if you look at a series of 1000 trades, this is always a strategy to follow if you want to crash your account eventually. So, and, and it's, it's very normal and natural for us human beings that we don't like to make, make mistakes. Uh, not because of how we appear to others when if you make a mistake, but it's very hard to admit to yourself, okay, I was wrong about this position, I should cut my losses. And you can approach this really by having what I like to call a game plan always. Before you enter a trade, ask yourself, why am I entering the trade? And it can be a number of reasons, it can be technical indicators, something fundamental, sentiment, or uh, a mixture of those. Uh, but you need to have a reason why you're entering trade, you should set a take profit target where you want to exit the trade again. And even more importantly, you have to, uh, you have to decide for yourself, when am I going to exit this trade if it goes uh, against me? So this is really, really important. And then ideally your take profit target should be at least two times uh, farther away than your stop loss. Then you have also the math going into your favor risk reward ratio. I don't want to do too much math and bore you guys now with this, mm -hmm. but uh, just rule of thumb, you know, if you if you manage to uh, earn two times as much as you're risking on a trade, uh, you can be correct you, or you only need to be correct 33% of all the time not to lose money. So you have a scenario that's even better than a coin flip. Then uh, this is very, very favorable for you. So this is the first one. Uh, second one very shortly is over leveraging. Uh, I know a lot of platforms out there and Prime Expity is one of those platforms, of course, too, where offer leverage. Uh, for example, for Bitcoin, we offer up to one to 100 uh, in leverage. But just because you have this leverage doesn't mean you should always use it on every trade. Because remember, if you have a position out there with one to 100 leverage, you're using over leverage, the position just needs to move 1% against you. And then you have crashed your account, uh, then your, your money is gone. And uh, I don't think anybody out there is uh, really able to time the market that perfectly that you always know like, okay, here's the bottom now. It's not going to move 1% further or 2% further. Um, so better be safe and sorry. And uh, for, especially for the beginning, use a max leverage of maybe 1 to 5 or 1 to 10. You know, it's going to be good for your for your head and you will spend your nights actually sleeping and not worrying about your position. <laughs> Yeah, that's so important because uh, you get people get too emotionally attached to the to their positions and then they cannot sleep and they, the market is again going against you and you get like so mm -hmm. stressed if, if this is happening to you you're doing for sure something wrong you know so um yeah it's very important also something that i learned from your channel that i can really say to people that a mistake i was making i can learn i learned from you dirk was very cool oh, um, great yeah. mission accomplished already man. yeah <laughs> so uh, something i'll be doing like uh, I, I was going home or maybe home and after like let's say 6 p.m 7 p.m i was stop after my trades were positioned i was keep like checking my phones and trying to maybe i'll do mm -hmm. one more trade you know and uh, even my girlfriend complaining like andre when are you going to stop you're going to relax have dinner you know enjoy our time together so this is a mistake yeah. i was making and i'm kind of now trying to you know stop with this uh, kind of a yeah. bad habit yeah that is super important. You know, that's why I, I, I see you watch that video. I was talking in that video about, uh, you know, to separate your, your trading time from your free time. I do that by having a separate office that is not attached to my home, uh, which I rented where I go to trade, where I know if I'm in that place, I'm going to concentrate on trading. Once I leave the office, get home, I'm going to concentrate on my family. And of course, I'm also not trying to pick up the phone too often to, to check prices. Uh, that keeps in the long run you'll keep your mental sanity by doing that yes yeah for sure mental sanity is everything guys because you can go crazy in these markets for sure <laughs> so yeah. talking talk, talk about the market now Dirk, because uh, we saw like a lot of fud from china in the past weeks uh, a lot of bad news and also had the evergrande episode do you think uh, uh, how do you see the market at the moment do you see there's maybe there'll be more fud coming uh, more manipulation or now this time is over mm -hmm. we're gonna ride the waves now go go to hundred thousand uh, dollars bitcoin what are the expectations for the market in the next uh, three mm -hmm. months well i'm for sure um we are probably in the most exciting months uh, that we've seen in the past four years or since the last uh, cycle high we had in late 2017 uh, because uh, we have a lot of those 
quite popular models and some models of I, I really like to. I'm, I'm thinking, for example, of stock to flow by Plan B now that are projecting that we should see Bitcoin somewhere between 100 and 300,000 US dollars altcoins, uh, of course, moving up uh, together with Bitcoin, then also reaching your all time highs. And this should happen somewhere between December and probably February or March next year. So a lot of those quantitative models are really uh, are put uh, are being put to the test now. Uh, if they are going to succeed, you know, we have a good explanation to to describe why Bitcoin is appreciating in value in those cycles. If they don't succeed, well, then we need to come up with something new. Uh, however, uh, as a trader, at least if you're trading uh, short term, you don't really care if prices go up or down, but you know in a situation like this, there will be a lot of volatility on the market and volatility, at least for to a certain extent, is always good. When it comes to FUD, well, I, I don't think we can really expect anything from China anymore that really can scare the market. I mean, what are they going to do now? They've completely forbidden it and this time they are serious. <laughs> so they are saying that at least. What else can they do? You know, this is this is like when you're at school and your teacher is screaming at you. After this, he doesn't have anything anymore bad that he can do to you. This is as far as you can go. And I mean, of course, we need to be prepared that the next FUD is probably always somewhere around the corner. And usually, you know, those black swan events are called black swan events because nobody can expect uh, from what direction they might be coming. Um, so, yeah, be prepared for something like this. But what I see at the moment is that the market really seems to be in a very, very good uh, shape. And, and maybe you can share my, my screen there very quickly that I can yeah, sure. explain this a little bit. So what you see there up there, this strong resistance zone, I've been talking a bit uh, about this quite a lot uh, on my videos lately. So this is the zone where we had uh, people uh, in March to May or between March and May that, that bought at this areas between 53,700 and 59,000 uh, before we crashed down that are still sitting on losses. And the way I see at the moment uh, the price action is behaving there actually looks very nice. We, we didn't bounce immediately off it. Um, and every time we bounce off, we see buying activity again. We can see that very well uh, from the candle, for example, yesterday, we, where we went uh, quite harsh down to, I think it was 54,000, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And then we saw buying activity up again. And uh, this is like activity that is very, very typical for this phase we are uh, in at the moment. And this is at least from a from a chart perspective, uh, to add another dimension to, to those models, something that uh, makes me very, very positive, to be honest, for mm -hmm. at least the next month. In December, of course, we need to reevaluate them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, there's a sign coming now. We can talk about it, maybe about this because have, people are worried about the altcoins. You know, I see my group people very worried about the altcoins because the dominance of Bitcoin is recovering. And we see um, the altcoins are, are like underperforming compared to Bitcoin. And do you think this is the sign? Is a sign we're going to see um, probably a new all time high for Bitcoin very soon? I hope so. And uh, I, I've prepared my trading positions for that as well. So after we had this deleveraging, uh, back when from 53,000 down to 40,000, I built up new midterm positions between 48 and 42,000. I have my stop loss there sitting at 52,000 at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is just for part of my my trading uh, my trading position, of course. You know, I, I'm not putting everything in in one trade, as I said. Uh, you have to deviate between long term, mid term, short term trading there. Mm -hmm. And and uh, to answer your question, I'm pretty positive that we are going to see actually new all time highs. And I know I'm putting myself out there <laughs> by by saying something like this, but I don't want to stay very vague. Uh, however. You also still need to be prepared that the volatility is going to be high. So it's not out of the question that we might be uh, going up and probably will be going up. But that doesn't mean that we are not going to have harsh days where we see corrections to the downside of maybe five or 10 percent. Mm -hmm. And yesterday we, we saw that already a little bit, you know, and it's for me, it's always fascinating on a day like this where you have uh, and maybe let me zoom in there a little bit so you guys can see that better. Uh, hold on. Oh, no, this one I didn't want to move. So I'm I'm talking about uh, this candle here. So what you usually see then on on social media, 
uh, very quickly so on Twitter, on Reddit, and so on and so forth, is that the sentiment immediately flips to the opposite. Suddenly, everybody's becoming bearish again, just with a little move like this. Mm -hmm. And we saw this this morning also in the in the fear and greed index, which was yesterday at 78, so extreme greed, which is always an area where at least some of my alarm bells already start ringing. And then it dropped down to 70 again. It's, the market is very, very sensible at the moment, sentiment-wise, and uh, <clears throat> the situation can, can change from everybody's euphoric to everybody's depressed uh, and fearful, really with a blink of an eye. It just needs like three or four percent of move in, in Bitcoin at the moment. Yeah, talking about altcoins, and sorry, I deviated a bit from your question there. Okay. Uh, very typical. This is also what we saw in 2017 uh, in the last month that Bitcoin dominance was rising again. And then in, if history repeats itself, we are going to see a great reset again. Many of those altcoin projects probably are going to die. I'm sorry to say so, but it's going to be like this. If you compare four years ago, which altcoins did we have in the top 20 or top 30 there, many of those either haven't moved at all or have completely disappeared. Uh, I'm not going to to uh, call out names there now. Uh, so be prepared for this. Nonetheless, you'll also see, of course, altcoin projects that are going to survive. Something like Cardano that really, you know, has a has a utility, has a use there, has great technology. I think they are going to be around in four years still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something people need to understand this market is it took me a long time actually to understand and I suffered a lot back in 2018 is don't treat altcoins as a long term investment because we see yeah. many of the altcoins back in 2017, 18, they had a lot of hype. And now if you see 2021, these altcoins, sometimes they, they're not even there anymore. And so mm -hmm. um, this was that was, was a mistake. And I see a lot of people getting really attached to, to one altcoin. Oh, this altcoin is going to do super well because I like the team and, and get really attached to one project. And they forget about Bitcoin, which is for me the, the only coin and in, in the end in the crypto market that matters. I'm not like a like 100% Bitcoin mass maximalist, but you see in the end, people want to accumulate more Bitcoin. And I tell my group in my community, I use the altcoins just to accumulate more Bitcoin. I don't I don't trade, I don't yeah. hold altcoins long term. And I probably, <laughs> at the end of this bull market, my plan is to get rid of the most of the altcoins. I'm going to get rid of, of all, all of them because we see in the bear market, they lose like more than 90% value, you know, so. No absolutely, Ab absolutely. And a uh, good example that you gave uh, for what I was saying earlier about being emotionally attached to a position. Um, I see that a lot. I've been there too. When I started with crypto, I was emotionally attached because I was uh, looking uh, when doing my first steps there for the next Bitcoin. Well, <laughs> but there is no next Bitcoin. Uh, what we need to understand is really something uh, that is called the network effect. The, the hashing power, the network power of uh, especially Bitcoin and to some extent, of course, also of Ethereum is light years ahead of what any other altcoin out there can do. Just look at the, the consensus proofed, uh, proof of work. So the, the consensus algorithm, uh, hashing algorithm Bitcoin is using. If you compare the next coin out there, I think it must be Bitcoin Cash uh, in, in terms of networking power. Bitcoin is like a hundred times, the Bitcoin network is a hundred times stronger than the Bitcoin Cash network. And this is like when you found a company and, uh, you know, I found a company and I approach you, for example, saying like, hey, I just invented the next Facebook. Give me your money, you know. Uh, you're probably going to say like, okay, you know, could maybe work out. Maybe I'll give you a little bit because I think you're a smart guy and you have a good team. But by the end of the day, uh, you have to do a reality check. It's like, okay, can Dirk uh, really f uh, found the new uh, Facebook? Can he do something better than Facebook? Can he compete with a company that has like hundreds of millions of dollars lying around in cash that they could use, you know, to to advance even farther than any small startup project. So this is like, you know, when you have an altcoin and you want to do something better than Bitcoin or Ethereum. So that's why I, I also, I have like 85% uh, of my long-term positioning in Bitcoin uh, to some extent also Ethereum and just small percentages, of course, I put in altcoin as well, you know, to be lucky sometimes and have those gainers of a thousand or two thousand percent. Yeah, just a question that I had in my in my head now. So, what would you say? Would you say to people that now they are like uh, stuck in a, an altcoin that they they are like a, having a loss and they don't want to trade against Bitcoin? They want to like mm -hmm. they not they they are afraid to cut their losses. Do you think they should basically just try to realize okay the loss is there, maybe move to Bitcoin soon because the dominance is going higher? So, 
maybe uh, we can talk about yeah that. i mean if if you have like uh, all of your saving in in this altcoin for sure i at least would take some of my losses and put this in bitcoin and maybe then just not look at the market for a very long time uh and, until things have recovered a little bit uh and yeah basically this is uh, what i also did at the beginning of this year i still had some altcoins that i was holding on for four years and eventually i said you know, whatever, I'm, I'm just going to cut my losses now, I'm going to put everything in Bitcoin, which was like the wisest decision I could make. I did this last year. And, and since then, well, I mean, Bitcoin hasn't gone up by by uh, by six times already. Um, so eventually, everything like comes down again, when the market uh, returns to normality to to Bitcoin and Ethereum. And yeah, there is a time like you just said, where you just need to get out. But it's another great example of Again, before you enter a position, you should have this game plan. What if yeah. this altcoin doesn't perform like I want? I'm going to cut my losses at, I don't know, like 30, 40 or 50 percent or whatever you are comfortable with. And then either take out cash or, or move it to Bitcoin, preferably yeah. the second one, in my opinion. Perfect. Yeah, just to share with you guys, by the way, if you want to share the volatility in the market, um, Prime SBT now listed Solana, Cardano, Uniswap, Polkadot and other popular assets like Dodge. There's also... Um, um, yeah. I think XRP. So many coins now, for sure, they're going to underperform against Bitcoin. So if you are an experienced trader, if you know how to do leverage, this is just for an experienced trader. You can trade all these altcoins against Bitcoin on Prime SBT. This is brand new. This is this is, this is quite new actually. There's a uh, yeah. news here. <clears throat> and um, also, if you if you don't if you don't trade, if you don't actually if you want to join the market, you don't have experience trading. Uh, Prime SBT also has the Covesting program, which you can basically copy traders with experience of course this is not 100 guarantee you're going to make money there's like a lot of risk involved into this but you can copy traders that are doing well in the market and there's also this news here from uh, yahoo finance for example like top ranked covesting strategy manager makes followers more than one million dollars yeah. in two months this was uh it's actually this news from like a couple of days or something or hours. yeah and no, 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 so this one months. but things have even gotten better <laughs> since then so there's one guy who's up ninety thousand percent yeah it's crazy moment. so <laughs> if you guys want to uh, uh, um, take advantage of the volatility of the market if you don't if you don't have experience trading i'm also going to leave the link here to prime sbt so we get 50 percent uh, deposit bonus for trading of course but covesting it doesn't count i think the, the bonus but you can you can um, at least uh, follow some traders there's so many traders you can follow and uh and also by the way there's also a new program now covesting yield accounts you can basically leave your um crypto on prime sbt and you can have yield against a crypto so it's a very good way to earn passive income as well so there are many new things coming for prime sbt and uh, i'll leave all the links for this news and information down here in the description okay so um yeah uh looks uh, looks everything looks amazing i really like what we're talking about here so maybe you can talk about more about the strategies and do more ta i mm -hmm. think these people will actually want uh people want uh yeah. us to, to 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 do right now i think uh maybe you can share with us some some of your strategies what kind of strategies you you, you do when you're trading like what kind of uh, maybe you can share with us some uh, simple strategy that you yeah. do uh, any trader can do and uh, try to 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 repeat you know this uh, mm. maybe you can show something to 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 my to sure. my audience uh, sure so i i think first of all the, the simplest strategy you can always follow when you start trading is hotlink this is very easy you know and mm -hmm. uh, just buy some bitcoin and hold on to it as long as you can uh, maybe you know if if uh, if you don't want to put in a lump sum you dca do co do dollar cost averaging put in a little bit every month uh, only as much as you can of course uh, afford to lose but this is like in general the truth about anything when it comes to investing i think when we talk about trading really a very very simple strategy to start with is always one that doesn't eat up so much of your time and uh, i just want to quickly go here on twitter for you to show you something mm -hmm. hold on Twitter, here we go. So there is something on Twitter called the fear and greed index, Bitcoin fear and greed index. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is measures the sentiment of the market. So basically, are uh, market participants uh, at the moment expecting more upside from Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in general and or more downside? And when you, for example, see this in the green area at the moment, 
then you should try to just concentrate on long positions because you don't want to go against the trend. You don't want to go against the sentiment. And um, normally, and, and you can see really in the in the last two, three weeks, how well this would have worked since the, since the sentiment flipped from negative, from fear again to, to greed. So this is really, really simple. And this is also something uh, you can do if you are somebody that has to work for for his or her money, meaning you probably have a job from nine to five or maybe even longer that you have to attend to every day. So, you know, log in in the morning into your training account, have a look at what is the current fear or greed index. Then maybe you make out like, okay, if a fear, uh, fear and greed index is positive at the moment, where would be a good area to enter the market? Place your place your limit order there. Place your stop loss. Place, place your uh, uh, take profit. Then you can close your laptop or, or shut down your app and go to work. And when you come home at night, uh, you'll see how your trade worked out. And this is really something that works out very well, very very well. So there's not much mystery to trading as long as you s try to stick with a trend. And of course, the it doesn't always work like this. You know, it's mm -hmm. not that easy. But remember, if your target is two times as far away uh, as your stop loss, you only need to be correct with this 33% of the time and you will not lose money. And not losing money is always the first thing you need to accomplish when starting to trade. So this is really, really simple. Another very simple thing, uh, in my opinion, is when you see uh, let me zoom out here a little bit again for you. Uh, so I have two Bollinger Bands in here. Uh, I think they are probably not so uh, good to see here. So one is currently down here, one is currently up here. And whenever you see the Bollinger Bands contracting, so they are pulling together more and more and get, get guy very narrow. Uh, so a little bit like what we saw down here. You can be sure you are going to see a quite volatile reaction of a market either to the upside or to the downside. And you can play situations like this very, very easy if you uh, if you use stop buy or stop sell orders. So when you see Bollinger Bands are contracting, why not place a stop buy order like 10% uh, over the current price and a stop sell order 10% below the current price? Because if the move comes, it's going to have a lot of momentum and you're probably going to catch on very fast. Last time I recommended uh, something like this was by the way down here where I said, I think like placing a stop buy order at 48,000 uh, could, could be a very good strategy at the moment and it was. You know, and it's really, really easy. Everybody can do that. You don't need to to be a rocket scientist to do something like this. Uh, so if you just start out with two simple strategies like this, it's very hard to not, you know, earn more uh, more per year than probably your bank is giving you as interest rate on your account at the moment. Uh, would be very high. I would be surprised. Uh, but of course, you know, remember always use the stop loss, and this is this is important. So yeah, very simple strategies. I, I of course I, I could go now into some quantitative analysis methods. You know, I, I use like machine learning for my day trading, but uh, this is a little bit like you want to drive a Formula One car before you learn uh, to ride a bicycle. So this is something for the future, and of course we still need stuff three or four years down the road that we can teach you. <laughs> Yeah, cool. And I've seen that also in your videos, uh, you, you do you use a lot of uh, on-chain and sentiment analysis. Like yeah. maybe you can share, talk more about these things. Like because uh, this yeah. strong support, for example, or this strong support to talk about is based on on-chain on data, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, exactly the, the zones you see here: strong resort, uh, sorry, strong resistance, light support, solid support, strong support. Uh, support are not because of some lines I drew in the chart there, where I think there's support and resistance. This is comes from on-chain metrics. On-chain metrics really, uh, in my opinion, can bring your trading to the next level. This is something you don't have in any other asset class, that you can look into the asset class and really determine where are areas where people bought at the moment, what is the network at the moment doing, how are long-term holders, short-term holders, and so on and so forth behaving at the moment. And uh, you can gain this totally for free from Glassnode once a week. Um, I, I sh shared a link, I think, on my video. Maybe you can share a link here later too. And um, this 
gives you insight. For example, like I said earlier, this zone, which I call strong resistance up here, was a zone where people that bought between May, uh, between March and May 2021 are still sitting on losses. And what you can expect normally when the market re-enters such a zone, especially after people have been uh, in loss already by 50% or more uh, when we went down to 30,000, is that they are probably going to sell. Uh, so the market is not likely to to push through this very, very fast. And uh, like I said earlier, I'm a bit surprised that we look as good in this zone as we do at the moment. Um, so, yeah, you can also see uh, very another very important metric. Uh, for example, how are long term holders behaving at the moment? And what we see is the vast majority of people buying Bitcoin at the moment are those so-called long-term holders so that hold on to their coins for uh, a year or longer. Uh, this is crazy. We've never been at such a high level as before, which I personally also think is, first of all, a good sign. Second of all, maybe a sign of institutional adoption we are seeing. So a lot of stuff really you can deduct from those on-chain metrics. And I'm, I'm always surprised like the, the creativity people come up with uh, when it comes to to uh, creating new metrics from from this because it's still a very very young science so to say yeah very cool actually in this uh, support zone uh, we talk we talked uh, talk about, talked about i was also showing in my channel we see we seen the, the whales buying accumulating more bitcoin so for sure you know we uh, many people are saying that we're going back to 20k but i was seeing mm -hmm. the whales doing this their their moves and then it's not possible you know that with these ways are accumulating bitcoin yeah. Um, and now they take 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 them take Bitcoin to 20k. It doesn't make any sense. So for me, it was giving more like because we do technical analysis, but sometimes there's things uh, we cannot see in the charts. So we have to check, you know, yeah. see what's happening on the chain, uh, what the whales are doing. So this is very important. And also Dirk is showing in on Prime SMT Academy content about that. So I highly recommend you guys to follow uh, Prime SMT as well. Um, yeah, Dirk. So I don't know. Thank you so much for coming here today. I don't know. I think it's we we pretty much uh, killed it. You know, I think this is very 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 nice uh, uh, content. And um, and for sure, people have to follow your channel. I'm gonna leave all the links down below here. Maybe you have so many uh, maybe other advice or ideas uh, just before we wrap up this content this episode. Well, first of all, thanks again for having me. It really was a pleasure. I'm, I, I really hope you guys out there, you know, can can learn something like this. Uh, of course, always welcome, you know, to come to our channel uh, and have a look at what we are doing there uh, right now. And uh, my my advice for you guys out there might sound a little bit boring, but it's so important, and that is why I always repeat it at the end of my videos. Please, please, please take a stop loss. Take a stop loss, guys, to be careful in these markets because volatility is there and you want to wake up next day and realize like, oh, my God, you know, exactly, <laughs> is, exactly. Stop losses are there to be used. OK, Dirk, thanks so much. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode today and uh, hopefully see you guys every uh, again very time uh, next time soon. OK, bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Então é isso aí, pessoal. Espero que vocês tenham gostado da entrevista aqui com o Dirk Hartig, da Prime XBT. Se você gostou, deixa o like, se inscreve no canal, ative todas as notificações. Também se inscreve no canal da Prime XBT. Eu vou deixar o link aqui abaixo de tudo que a gente conversou aqui no vídeo de hoje. Então, até a próxima.